everyone. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be looking at the new functions on Napkin AI. It was in beta version for a very, very long time and I've been recommending it in all of my workshops, but I finally decided to subscribe because they released the subscription version. So if you're interested in coming to explore Napkin AI with me, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm on the Napkin website in case you haven't seen this before. And you can use Napkin for free. When it was in the beta version, I actually used Napkin. And I said, as soon as they release the subscription model, I'm going to say, take my money, take my money. But uh, I decided to subscribe. Let me show you the difference, first of all, in the pricing structures. So here you can sign up. You still get 500 AI credits, which is very generous. Uh, you, it's free forever. You of unlimited visuals editing, which is quite amazing. You can unlimited file uh, import, so PowerPoint, doc, PDF, etc. Uh, unlimited PNG PDF export. And uh, here, notice how with the export, there's no PowerPoint. So I wanted to actually export some of the visuals as a PowerPoint. So that's why I subscribe. You have built-in styles and fonts, standard icons, and nap napkin branding on the visuals. Now, I've subscribed to the Plus version. It's $9 US dollars per month. And I get everything in free, but I get 10,000 AI credits unlimited PowerPoint and SVG export. I get three custom styles, so I can use my brand colors for that. Uh, I can remove the napkin branding, but to be honest, if I've created a diagram using napkin, I always put the citation. I always put created by napkin AI because I like to put the cit citation. And then for this plus, you can get team management and uh, billing. Okay, so let me just go, here is the website. I've already signed in here. And here I've opened up my Reggio Emilia napkin. You can see my library down here of a lot of different ones, different napkins that I've created. But let's just focus in on this. So uh, I'm a big fan of Reggio Emilia and their principles. They were originally created for early learners. But if we have a look at these principles, they're actually very solid, uh, useful principles for all age groups. So... It's about the image of the child where children are viewed as capable, competent learners who are full of potential and actively construct their own learning. Now, I won't read all 10 of these because what I'll do is I'll use Napkin to create a visual and at the same time, let's explore some of the new functionality. So you can see I've created one here, but let's do that again. Okay, so again, you can see the Thunderbolt here. We let the Thunderbolt do its magic. You can see all these dots thinking and thinking about creating. So you can see I've got lots of de these different things, but now there was a customized tab before, but this customized tab now allows us to specify the visual, the detailed level and the orientation. So I'm going to go to perhaps summary. I'm going to say stay closer. And then mind mapping is one of the new visuals. So I'm going to say mind map and then let's apply and then see what happens. Okay. So it doesn't take long on me, just a few seconds. Oh, that doesn't really look like a, a mind map to me, but you know, we can still choose. You can see the fish bird. Oh, this is nice. And this is based on one of my colors. But you can see that I've actually chosen that design underneath. That's the design that I'm going to go for and use in all of my workshops. I think even in AI workshops and concept-based workshops and teaching with deep conceptual understanding, assessment workshops, I think these Reggio Emilia principles are really important. So I talked about the child as a capable learner. The environment as the third teacher, allowing children to express themselves in different languages, adopting a project-based learning environment, documenting the learning journey through qualitative and quantitative data. The teacher is seen as a co-learner in the environment, 
We always want to involve parents. Uh, we want to build community. That the curriculum is emergent based on the students' curiosity and where they uh, go in terms of their inquiries. And also we want learning to be collaborative. So I'm going to click on that. And uh, these are my brand colors that I've put on. So I did want to show you that actually. Let me try and show you. So here I've got some different colors. Uh, here, what does this say? This is like still changing the, the different colors. But if I go back, let's just show you how I did the brand actually. So if I go here and then I'll just show you because I chose the dark red and also the dark blue. And let's have a look. I think I pressed. Now I'm just going to go to style. And where did I go before? Customize styles, you saw. So let me just go down here. Customize styles. So I'm allowed, was it two or three? Let me just go over here. I think I'm allowed three custom styles. I put in two. I like this dark blue. And I also um, like this dark burgundy. And then these are all the built-in styles that we can have, that we can include. If there's a style you don't like, just untick it. Uh, so they're the different styles. I can add another style because I've got up to three. And then what's really nice about this is that we can export it. So if I just uh, select the whole thing and then I want to export, right? I right click, I can copy and paste this directly. Or because I subscribe to this, I can actually export as a PowerPoint or an SVG file where it's an vector image and I can edit it and scale it. I can be in light mode or dark mode. I prefer the light mode. And it's interesting. I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying just through their own anecdotal kind of uh, information gathering that a lot, most females prefer a light background and males prefer a dark background. I'm going to look at the research of that to see if it's true because I prefer light backgrounds. And then we can download that and that downloads as a PDF. So it's editable. And you could animate all the different sections because I wouldn't want to show all 10 Reggio Emilia principles in one go, but I would actually be explaining each of those bullet points. Oh, napkin, you've done such a great job. Uh, let's just go over here. We can share napkins, right, as well. So anyone with the link can either view it. They can comment, edit. So that's important, I think, to be able to share your work. And then here there's also style. So that was the style that I talked about. Anything in settings, yeah, generate visuals in auto detect, page breaks are hidden, etc. And you can be in uh, the colors can be a dark mode, normal or inverted. Fantastic. So going back to the pricing page, if you really um, are a, a huge user, you've got the pro and that's everything in plus, and you've got 30,000 credits. So let's say that you're a, a really vigorous user. Uh, you've got exclusive designs. Oh. I don't think that I will subscribe, but maybe I could just subscribe for one month just to have a look at those exclusive designs. Unlimited custom styles, custom styles. So I understand what that upload your own fonts. I don't really need that team management and billing, uh, which I already had. And then optional credit uh, top ups. I don't need that. So the only thing I'd be interested in is what are the exclusive designs? OK, maybe I'll explore that next time. OK, so that was just looking at napkins, some of the new functionalities and then the different uh, levels of subscription that they have. They promise to stay free so that you can still utilize all of the basic functions. But uh, there's the plus and the pro. And I knew that I would subscribe straight away as soon as they came out of the beta version. It's such a powerful tool. We know that students, in fact, everybody, humans learn better through visual coding and through looking at visuals. We can actually process information a lot faster than just reading text. So I think Napkin's a wonderful tool. Thank you, Napkin. If you've used Napkin in interesting ways, please feel free to share and put a comment in the section below. Maybe even sharing your napkins because you can share them through the link. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time.